So thank you all for being here today. Uh, please put your hands together for our first speaker, and I think there's gonna be some music for Lloyd Thrasher. How's it going? What do you gotta say about Harper? Louder! I want you guys to say this with me. Tell me when I'm alive. Tell me when I am alive. The reason being, it's a, it, it's a song I wrote. It's a song I wrote about this. I was actually in Montreal, and I saw a bunch of people. They were all wearing the red, uh, the red squares, and they were getting arrested. I got arrested too because of my red skin. I'm not a racist. I love Canada. I love the multiculturalism. I love everybody. I love you guys. I hate Harper. Who's with me? The song goes like this. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me when I'm alive. Goes like that. When, you, when we sing together, we'll sing together. When we are together, it's like, uh, it's like how the sun works with the clouds. It's like how the grass works with the trees. It's like how the people work with the other people. You know, I only see one people. I see human. I don't see black. I don't see white. I don't see Chinese, Japanese, none of that. I see one people. I'm here with you. Are you here with me? When I say Canada, you say stop Harper. Canada! 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 Awesome! <laughs> and this is Tell Me When I'm Alive.
stay strong so we survive That was Lloyd Thrasher, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, so up next, we're going to be excited about it. Very excited about it. Who lives in East Vancouver? <laughs> All right. Up next, we have Libby Davis. She is a member of parliament for Vancouver East. She was first elected as the member of parliament for Vancouver East in 1997. She was re-elected in November 2000, June 2004, January 2006, and October 2008. Most recently, in May 2011. People in East Vancouver just like this woman. Uh, she is the deputy, deputy leader for the NDP. She is also the federal NDP spokesperson for health. Libby also served as the NDP House Leader from 2003 to March 2011. Her history as a strong community activist for Vancouver began over 35 years ago. Please put your hands together for Libby Davis. Well, hello everybody. Thank you very much, Jessica. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to share a platform with a pirate party, so here I am. Uh, and all of that off of Blackberry. <laughs> Time of the sign, uh, sign of the times. Um, first of all, thank you to everybody for coming out here today. Um, I really feel like Victory Park here is becoming now a good tradition of a place to stand up for democracy, because now we've had a whole number of rallies. There was the anti-prorogation rallies. Uh, there were rallies against some of the terrible bills that Stephen Harper has put through. So this has been a really good place to come and be together and feel the solidarity that we have in our community in Vancouver to stand up for justice and democracy. So first of all, everybody, happy Canada Day. I've been, I've been running around East Vancouver at all kinds of different events and cutting cakes and singing Oh Canada, but I'm really glad that this event is taking place as well. Um, this is obviously much more political and it's, it's talking about the politics of what's going in our country and that's really, really important. Uh, when I think about what the conservative government is doing, I think about a government that seems hell-bent on dividing people, you know, of creating uh, fear, of creating other. And we, when we look at, for example, the recent bill that was uh, rushed through, stampeded through, um, that makes it, will make it a lot more difficult for refugees to come to Canada. Um, to me, this is just the antithesis of what this country is about. So that's one thing that comes to mind for me on this Canada Day. Um, another critical issue, you know, yesterday I was at a press conference at the Aboriginal Friendship um, uh, Centre at Hastings and Commercial, and there were 14 organizations that have had their funds cut. Staff have been laid off from the Cultural Connections programs. Now these are all programs that are pr um, uh, building capacity of Aboriginal youth leadership. And to see these frontline organizations that are operating basically on a shoestring, to see their funds cut, cut back, especially during Aboriginal Month in Canada, which is June, National Aboriginal Day was June 21st, to me, again, is the antithesis of what this country is about. Um, you know, somebody today pointed out um, some new wording for O Canada, and that we should say uh, O Canada and on native land, not and native on native land, but on native land. So you can see what just one little word, word can do in changing the meaning about something. So I, I do want to um, today just reflect on the history of First Nations and um, the challenges that have been, whether it's residential school, whether it's massive cutbacks under this last budget that we had. And so today we stand in solidarity with uh, Aboriginal people in our city who are struggling very hard to make sure that their voices are heard. And if you haven't written a letter or an email or texted or done something uh, to oppose these cuts to the Aboriginal Youth Connections Program, please do, because we got to really uh, stand together on this and make sure that these organizations don't fold up completely. You know, friends, there's so much to talk about today in terms of what has happened under the Harper majority, the guy who got a majority with 39% of the vote. Um, and we could talk about what the solutions are and what we need to do, but I think right now, 
Um, we have to support the actions that are taking place. Somebody mentioned the Council of Canadians and they're doing an incredible job of taking on um, the alleged election fraud that took place. I mean, this is at the root of what is, has gone wrong in Canada, that even you know, a, a democratic election process is now under suspicion and people now feel like, wow, do I even now have the space um, to go and vote or will it be tainted? And so those, those legal challenges that have been mounted are really, really important. So I hope that you will support the Council of Canadians. And I do think on this Canada Day and for the next year and the next few years, as we move towards the um, federal election, we cannot sit back and say, well, it's game over. We cannot let this guy get away with what he's doing, whether it's ramming through um, 800 amendments to the budget bill that they opposed, of course, and forcing the vote through hours and hours, whether it's uh, singling out refugees, whether it's singling out immigrants, whether it's cutting programs, whether it's attacking our public pension system, whether it's uh, destroying our healthcare system. I mean, the list goes on and on. We can't stand by and let this happen. And I know that the folks who are here today are very committed activists, but we have to work within our community, in our workplace, in our faith centers, wherever we move, we have to bring together. And I do believe that the idea of a strong, on-the-ground coalition to take on this government is what we need to do. So thank you for being here today. Let's stand up for democracy. Let's stand up for social justice. Let's say to Stephen Harper, we're not going to let you get away with this. We're going to hold you to account, whether it's in Parliament, whether it's in the streets, whether it's in the court system, wherever it is, we're going to do this on every level that it takes and we're going to take back Canada and make it the fair and just place that it should be, where people are welcomed, where, there, where we can work to end racism, where Aboriginal people are honoured and respected and all people have dignity and full rights. Thank you. also very exciting, uh, is Sasha Wiley, um, who, who might just be uh, telling you guys about why she has a, a cast on her arm right now. Um, Sasha is an adult education teacher in Vancouver, a labour activist, a slam poet, and a member of Occupy Vancouver. Sasha Wiley. Thank you so much everybody for being here today. I'm really honored to be here in this beautiful place on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish First Nations and I'm incredibly honored to be speaking right after Libby Davies who has been a, uh, a political mentor of mine since my childhood. I, uh, I admit that I yesterday was contemplating not coming here today um, partly because I was feeling some fear and I remember Jack's words and love is so much stronger than fear and I'm really feeling the love here today. I want to say thank you to the organizers of this great event today for all of their hard work. There's been a lot going on lately and they've worked tirelessly to bring us together here today to share some words, ideas, and to show our commitment to defending Canadian democracy. I have this sense lately that there are people who don't want us to talk about these things. On last Wednesday night, I felt very intensely that the Vancouver Police Department didn't want me, in particular, talking about these things. But I know it's not one municipal government trying to silence us. It's not one provincial government trying to quash protests. But at the top, it's the Harper government's blithe denial of fundamental rights and freedoms in their desperation to stifle dissent because they know we are watching. Yeah. Yeah. We are watching when they cram through Parliament massive omnibus budgets that are riddled with erosions to crucial Canadian institutions, the ones that protect the habitats of endangered fish, the one that gives us the right to be involved in consultations around industrial developments that degrade our, our environment. This, 
supposed budget document attacks unemployed people trying to deny them access to employment insurance they themselves pay into. It attacks seniors by raising the age for eligibility for old age security. And these are people like my grandparents, your grandparents, who have worked their entire lives for Canada's economy and in their communities. And for these kind of things, I know what we all think. Shame on this Harper government. Shame on this Harper government. There's so many problems with this budget, I could do a whole speech just about that. A budget, lest we forget, that was shoved through Parliament by this fraudulently elected Conservative majority government who received only 39% of the popular vote. We're watching that, but that's not the only thing we are watching. We're watching this government struggle to assert their validity, ignoring 30,000 and more complaints of electoral manipulation. We're watching when they cut funding to Elections Canada because we know their response. Look surprised? Who us? Act concerned? How could that happen? Deny, deny, deny. We see a pattern of responses from this government. When problems arise, they find ways to silence criticism. And this is from a government so wrapped up in itself it changed its name from the government of Canada to the Harper government. As though it's their country and not ours? But we know better. Whose country is this? Our country! These streets are ours. And we are the voters without whom no government is legitimate. The Constitution belongs to us. Our charter rights belong to us. This park belongs to us. No matter how this government tries to surprise and den deny our rights, they are, but we are watching. We are watching when workers across Canada have their rights denied through legislation that strips away their rights to collective organization and action. I'd like to mention Cup W workers who faced imposed legislation from a government that refused to negotiate with them. The same thing Air Canada workers faced. And when we see this happening at the federal level, we see other layers of government taking a page out of Stephen Harper's books and denying the rights of workers. So here in British Columbia, we've seen ICBC workers designated an essential service to deny their right to strike. Shame on this government. We've seen the Teamsters of the Rocky Mountaineer not only locked out, but replaced with scab workers and then silenced in their right to speak out about what's happening to them. Shame! We have seen nurses and teachers face legislation stripping away their bargaining rights, and the legislation's been found unconstitutional by Supreme Courts in BC and the Supreme Court of Canada, and our government's response? More unconstitutional legislation. Shame. The kind teachers we're going to be facing if they continue to take collective action every day were bigger than the fines being paid by BP for the Gulf oil spill. Where the Harper government leads, other governments in this country follow, and our democracy is on life support while yet more cuts come to health care, and it's ours, and we are watching. And we are watching when police are directed to use increasing levels of violence and brutality against anyone who dares to take their dissent public, particularly when they are women, people of color, people living in poverty, and members of other marginalized groups who seek to challenge the status quo. We saw it at the G8-G20 when activists were arrested preemptively and thousands faced arrest and police violence for no other reason than being in public space in a Harper-created police state. We've seen beautiful, inspiring student protests in Quebec that have ignited the activists within so many of us met both with laws that quash their fundamental freedoms and violent intimidation from police, who we know are the enforcement agency of this neoliberal regime trying to cram austerity down our throats, even though experts and the best research shows that this is not how to build economic recovery. The enforcement agents are sent out to make sure we don't get our messages out. They're directed to intimidate us by imposing arbitrary and baseless limits on our fundamental freedoms to expression and assembly like those rights we're enjoying here today, and they're threatening arrest at every turn. 
I had believed that to be arrested in Canada, one had to commit a crime, as our Constitution prescribes. But I have also learned that in the face of this neoliberal enforcement regime, that is no longer true. That educating people about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is itself a dangerous activity. One that can lead to unlawful and unnecessary displays of police violence like the one I was victim to. I believe I'm standing in front of you today only because people were and are watching. Together, we are watching. We are watching and we need to be recording. We need to film the police. We need to voice our dissent. We need to demand that our media cover opposition to this government and that our media stop the cone of silence they seem to be casting around protest, dissent, and police brutality. If we want democracy, we must build it, and only we can defend it because it is ours. Crassy means to rule. Demos are the people. Democracy is rule by us, the people. And that means the responsibility for making it happen is on all of us, on your shoulders, on my shoulders. I want to be able to stand here and talk about being a proud Canadian. I've said many times in my life that I live in a country that champions human rights, a country of freedom, and today these platitudes stick in my throat and I choke on them. If we want that vision of Canada, that vision of a Canada we know we believe in, we're going to have to fight for it because this government is taking us in the opposite direction. We must stand up, we must speak out. We must not let ourselves be intimidated, divided, or silenced. We can have a Canada that we're all proud to call home only if we build it ourselves. And I am so inspired by all of the beautiful people around me today because I see the faces of people who can build a Canada that is truly for us, the people of Canada. A Canada where the environment is protected, where education is accessible, where there's health care for all, including and especially refugees, where human rights and indigenous rights provide the framework for everything that happens in our country. I can see the possibility of that Canada on the horizon, and I'm here to say, step forward, let us all step forward and build that tomorrow together. Thank you so much. of the ILWU uh, Local 400 Marine Section for 12 years um, and has been the first Vice President of the VDLC. You are going to have to explain what that stands for because I am too ignorant of my apologies. For the past two years, um, he has lived uh, in a co-op in uh, Vancouver for 30 years and has two adult children. Terry. Hi. Uh, greetings from the Vancouver and District Labor Council. It's an organization of uh, trade unions in Vancouver. Um, basically, uh, the Harper plan has been spoken about here. His plan is fairly simple. His plan is to harm democracy by fraud, by the robocalls, the closures, basically turn people off from democracy because he doesn't want you to vote. He's all, what they're also doing is, is they're cutting taxes on the rich and corporations and then spending massive amounts of money on prisons and the military. So what will end up happening is there'll be no money for the good, for the public good. There'll be no money for daycare for, for people in Canada. There'll be less money for health care, less money for education. It'll also hamper the, the governments that come after because they will have to go back and raise taxes because he's lowered them. There won't be money in the kitty. In terms of the military, he's raising money. There's all kinds of money going to the military while today across this country there are hundreds of soldiers that are suffering from PTSD. That, that, that aren't getting the help they, they used to get, that had their funding cut back. This is the government that stands up, wants to be militaristic, but they treat their soldiers like, like dirt, like often happens in militaristic governments. There will be no new programs if this continues. But I think the worst thing that Harper is doing is he's attacking our community. When I was a young man, the, the concept was you looked at a society and judged it 
on how it treated its, its, its least advantaged people, its elders, its young people. We're treating our elders horribly. We're increasing the OAS, which is just an attack on the poorest of our retired citizens. We're cutting back on funding. Our students in Quebec are fighting a glorious fight to, to keep the tuition fees lower so that they're not going into debt and having to spend their, their early years working, finding a way out. They're, they've basically cut back every. They've cut back environment, fishery, science. Recently, they, they shut our Coast Guard station down. They don't care about our lives. They can basically give that to private corporations, have them do it for them. That's the direction they're going in. It's a world of Blade Runner, where basically the rich live in the clouds and the rest of us live in horrible, horrible circumstances. We can't allow that to happen. We must change that. A lot of this comes from the idea that greed is good. Greed is, no, is not good. Greed exists, but it is not in any way, shape, or form good. I want to end with a, a recent scientific study that I found quite wonderful. They studied toddlers, and they had toddlers where they, where they gave them Teddy Grahams, and they had a puppet that they could give the puppet food. And the puppet, they gave their own food, and they were happier when they shared than, than when, they got the, when they got the food for themselves. That's who we are. We share. And that's how we'll have to, that's how we'll defeat Harper, is by working together and sharing. The trade union movement needs to work with environmentalists and students. We need to work with that we work, need to work with native communities and, and immigrant communities. We need to work hard and we need to work with everyone and together we can end this lunacy of the Harper government. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I have a really exciting announcement. Um, over there is Food Not Bombs. Um, and they have free banana smoothies that you are welcome to go help yourself to. They will especially love you if you have your own container. Um, so please feel free to go back there, say hi, go get some banana smoothies.